you may know that there are 40 pins on the Raspberry Pi. But for those who don't, here's a basic explanation. Different pins have different tasks. You have your voltage pins like 5 volts and 3.3 volts, and you have your ground pins, which are, well, self-explanatory. What about the rest? Let's dive in. Firstly, we have GPIO, General Purpose Input Output Pins. These are the heart of the Raspberry Pi's functionality, allowing it to interact with the outside world. They can be programmed to read both inputs, like detecting button presses or temperature, and send outputs, like lighting an LED. Next up are the SBI, Serial Peripheral Interface Pins. These are used for communication between the Raspberry Pi and other devices or sensors using the SBI protocol. Then we have the I2C, Inter-Integrated Circuit Pins. These are used for communication between the Pi and other devices and, or sensors using the I2C protocol. It's a bit slower than SBI, but uses fewer wires. We also have UART. Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter Pins. These are used for serial communication between the Pi and other computers, microcontrollers, GPS modules, etc. Lastly, we have PWM Pulse Width Modulation Pins. These can simulate an analog output which can be used to control devices like servos or adjust the brightness of an LED. Remember, each pin has its own unique function and they all work together to make your Raspberry Pi a powerful tool. The next time you look at those 40 pins, you'll know exactly which each one of them is capable of. If you want to know what the SBI or I2C or PWM protocols are, I'll leave links to the videos I made earlier this week that give a basic explanation of what they are. I hope this video helped you understand more about the different GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. For more informative content like this, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.